Hi, and welcome to All Things LGBTQ Plus Youth, Youth Edition. Edition. Today is November 19th, and we will be talking about LGBTQ Plus representation and LGBTQ, the LGBTQ Plus community in media in general. My name is Jules Caserta. I use they, them pronouns. My name is Jamie, and I use they, them pronouns. To start off, let's define representation. Oh, I'm defining You're defining um, representation. So representation is basically... Um, anybody who anybody or characters so actors or characters in media or in books um or um online to some that the public including youth are exposed to and so if they, how they if they are part of a minority group yeah yeah part of a minor, minority so a uh, actor or character that is part of a minority group then yeah that is in yeah that is in media yes so why is rep important then? Why is rep important, especially like, why is any rep important, but mainly delving into queer representation? Because obviously that's what the show is for. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I think a big part of it is that we need to like expose younger students to, or not younger audiences to these, these minorities sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. um, because the earlier they're exposed, the more they can grow to accept it and the more it's normalized in communities. And media is like a really, really big part of pop culture too. So when you see these minorities and these figures represented in pop culture, then you, it started to be accepted into regular culture. Mm -hmm. Especially rap is important for the like, queer community and is like specifically and also for like outside of the like, cis hats too, so they can sort of so it is normalized and important yeah. there, but it's also important in like the queer community, especially for youth, because it like gives you a way to sort of grow to understand it a little bit more. Like if you're growing up and all you and you as a queer person, but you just don't know it yet, and you're seeing like bad representation, it can lead to internalized homophobia or transphobia, yeah. which is like crippling on your mental state. Um, and then like like you said with the cis het cisgender heterosexual people, you know, they. Uh, if they don't have like any queer friends, then this is like one of their queer only ways that they know of. That they know of. <laughs> um, this is one of their only ways of uh, viewing the community. Mm -hmm. So rep is important. A lot of people try to say that it doesn't really matter when it comes to the queer community. That like, why do you need to see yourself in media? I mean, you know, it's but no different just, than any other minority. Yeah, rep is important. That's kind of the Generally. biggest thing. Yeah. And it, how does it affect our, the youth mainly? How do you, like, psychologically, how do you think it affects them a little bit? Did it affect you at all when you were, like, I mean, I didn't that? have any representation. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't figure out, like, even, like, lesbian and gay was a thing until, like, fifth grade. Shout out to Pinterest, am I right? Okay. <laughs> um, but... That was, you know, from my own findings online, and it wasn't through media. But, of course, looking back, um, there are, I read a lot of, like, graphic novels that I saw this representation in, but I didn't recognize it as something. For example, up the this book, or series, it's a manga, I think. I read it back when I was having an anime phase type thing. But uh, Wandering Sun, it's a Everyone book about... Had one. Yeah, it's a book about two trans characters, so like, I don't remember their names. It's, it's been a while, while. Yeah. but um, it's about two trans characters and their struggles in middle school, mostly. And um, as they grow up, you follow them throughout the series and, you know, them meeting other people and dealing it with, the, with their friends and family and especially in a culture like Japan that tends to be fairly trans and homophobic. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, I mean, I, I think being able to identify representation is important too. Mm -hmm. May, yeah, and I think mainly for me, representation, I didn't really know a lot about it, like, because I only really started to get, like, get into like reading like queer novels and watching queer shows when I realized I was queer, but I think having it as like a kid would have made like recognizing like my identity and that kind of stuff a lot easier if I was already exposed to that, which I think we've touched on a little bit. Yeah. So um, it's, yeah. Sorry. No, I didn't have anything else to say. Okay. Um, 
there's a, a a YouTube channel online. It's called Pop and Ollie, and they do kids fairy tales, but they have queer characters in them. So like it's trans Cinderella, and he turns into a boy for the ball, and you know he's happy and goes from being an unhappy princess, and or an unhappy like slave of the evil stepsisters and to this handsome prince and he, you know, serenades the princess at the ball. Mm -hmm. So, and those really break it down and also identify those um, representations for younger audiences especially. Even, yeah, even if you're like a child who doesn't eventually realize that they're queer, it's still important to have that representation so you can like, it can affect your like it can affect your th ideas about the queer community. Like if you are watch if you're like seeing stuff where it's like the stereotypes and all of that, it'll lead to you believing that those are real and like that's all of it. Like if you especially if you're not ex if you're not exposed to it and being part of it, it's good to have it so you're the good representation so that you're yeah. a more understanding of it. Yeah, it, it like it, it makes it um, a more accessible idea to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. As, especially when it's like sprinkled in pop culture and mm -hmm. media. Even like with like representation, a lot of the stuff you'll see now, it's like it's the main thing. Where it's like where they're talking about like the queer identity and like the char the queer character struggle over it. But like if you just like have a side character yeah. who's like pansexual, it normalizes it. You know, there's this character over here who's, you know, low key queer, but like it's not low about key that. queer. They're probably high key queer. Let's be honest. So um, are there different keys of queer? <laughs> Yeah, but like moving on. If you have like a side character, which is like they're gender fluid and it's not like a huge deal. They can even be a main character, it's just like not even like a huge but thing. It's not about that. It's not about that. It's just yeah. part of who they are. It's like if their hair was a certain color, it's just part of who they are. <laughs> which is important to have. It's also but it it's also important to have the books where it is like that the struggle and all that is the main focus. <laughs> of the book where it's like Simon and the Homo sapien agenda the whole thing is kind of about him, him realizing his identity and like becoming a, getting into a relationship with someone yeah good book good book and it's huge movie, now it's book. huge and like it, it's great that that's like becoming because like, a big thing in the queer community that yeah. book and that movie and it's like a huge deal part of what was so cool about that is it wasn't um, is that it was also something that says hat people could get excited about because mm -hmm. it's a sweet little love story and it's not sexualized. It's not sexualized. Like a lot of yes, your thank media God. can be. It's yeah. It's so sexual. It's and it's, it's so a, strange. And a <laughs> person to look at that. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, but then it also like paints queer people in a bad light and like perpetualizes. Perpetuates. 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 That's not a Perpetuates. word. Perpetuates. <laughs> Perpetuates. I didn't know where. Um, <laughs> the stereotypes that queer people are pedophiles or sexual predators. Yeah, and like, you notice that too with like people's view, like limited knowledge on poly relationships too. Oh, yeah, people yeah. are always like, oh, it's just about sex. But if we had more of like healthy poly relationships in media, people who aren't part of that community could also normalize it and learn more about it and it yeah. would give them a chance to know that about that because i think some a lot of people probably want to know about this they just don't really know how yeah so what so we talked about how like love simon is considered like a good representation mm -hmm. and like a bunch of different books that we could go into but what about bad representation <laughs> oh man oh man um harry potter it's a Nice place to start. Oh gosh. It's it's Oh gosh. Okay. It's a decent series, but it's got it's, it's an amazing modern. series. Don't I'm not a okay. big Harry Potter fan. <gasps> I'm sorry. Sacrilege. I'm just it's just I'm not a fantasy person. It's beautifully written though. No, it's not. No, I like like the Okay, okay moving on. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um anyway, Harry Potter has some some kind of sketchy representation and then like like what like like there's like with the whole thing with albus dumbledore and that was like a queer baiting thing Can queer baiting but like, like go into that a little bit more like what happened well i don't you don't know i, I, I know I generally you you go so the harry potter books came out obviously they were all public <laughs> not a pun <laughs> 
they were published, and then a while later, J.K. Rowling revealed in an interview that Albus Dumbledore, Harry Potter's like mentor and the principal of Hogwarts, princi headmaster of Hogwarts, was gay. It was never explicitly stated in the book series, however, so a lot of people either labeled it as queer baiting or bad representation or J.K. Rowling trying to make herself look more progressive than she actually is. Just to clarify, queer baiting is like mm -hmm. when um, authors or screenwriters or whoever creates these characters and then like... They hint at the idea that yeah, they're like in marketing a lot of the time. But don't um, make it... Ob like They never explicitly say Yeah, it. they don't explicitly um, address that the character is queer, so... That leads to bad representation and like it's not representation. First exactly. Of all. So it, it it's like leading queer people on and trying. It's like monopolizing so queer people. You know, queer rating is essentially they hint at it in the marketing to get a, yeah. to get the queer audience or like to like get those views or whatever. So that's but never actually deliver on that. Yeah. So like, they don't upset the homophobes, mm -hmm. but they also have the queer people watching because they want that representation. Yeah, and then like during Pride Month, a lot of like big corporations will like make rainbow themed stuff even if they don't actually support the LGBTQ plus community? So personally I wouldn't label the Albus Dumbledore thing as queer baiting because it was never hinted at explicitly like in the yeah so it's like if you really really squint at it you can kind of see it but it's not debatable. really so but it's also not good representation because even though he is canonly gay it's never stated and it's never shown. Yeah. Meaning that the, ki the kids reading it didn't really get that. Yeah. So it didn't. It just doesn't create any representation. And even now, there's this huge scandal with the new movie series that's just creating, Fantastic Beasts, which focuses on a young Albus Dumbledore. Kind of. It's he's in it where he would be able to be shown as explicitly gay because now the Harry Potter audience is a lot older too, because it's like yeah. they're a lot older, so he would be able to be shown as explicitly gay. But in the I mean, movie, they that shouldn't have to be older. Just yeah, but he was uh, giving them an opportunity yeah. to be shown as explicitly gay, and now she said that he will not be shown explicitly gay. And that, my friends, is queer baiting. That's where the queer baiting comes in. Yeah. <clears throat> also, if you have to like drop it in an interview or like write it in the margin of a paper, which is what she did yeah. to her editor, she was like, the editor was like. He was like trying to like get Albus in a relationship or something, and particularly was like he's gay, which is what she claims would have ha happened. Yeah, and J.K. Rowling, I could rant about this for so long, but I, <laughs> but it's even with um, uh, like race and religion too. She does it a lot where she like now she's trying to seem more progressive than she actually was, like by adding it in, where it's like I think she was like there's one Jewish person in Hogwarts, and I was like what, <laughs> but. That's a whole thing. And then another thing with bad representation is playing on stereotypes of like the gay best friend. Ooh. Or, you want to go? <laughs> not, not, mm. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's a big bad stereotype. Yeah. Um, uh, and then that whole like, the, the feminine, you know, gay guy type thing is, is a bad stereotype and that, that's like a really popular or, one like the butch lesbian. Yeah. <laughs> They're both like these really popular stereotypes which do exist but they are not anywhere near the entirety of mm -hmm. those identities so then like writers will put those in to like again try to seem very progressive and like try to appeal to the queer audience but in reality just perpetuating these bad stereotypes yeah and then like uh, again back to that whole over sexualizing thing a lot of uh queer media well it does you know well it is queer and it's about these queer characters, it is sexual. It's not a sweet we love story. We need more wholesome gigs. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's no like... Especially for like youths too. Like, yeah, it's really hard to expose younger children to these ideas when all the only place that they're being put in is sexual. Yeah, yeah it's really interesting. There's another trope with um, bad representation. But I swear we'll talk about good representation soon. This is very negative. But another one that you see a lot is the barrier gaze trope. Well, they're in, they will introduce a queer character in the story and then quickly kill them off. So you appeal to the queer audience a little bit, but without, but also not angering anyone because they're dead now. Which you sh 
what you see a lot in like a recent one is like Voltron, which is a they introduced a gay character and then immediately killed him off. Like immediately killed him off. It was like two episodes. He was there, then he's dead. <laughs> so they get to claim the representation, but they didn't actually again show it. Yeah. Which you see a lot with people trying to claim like claim to be progressive and had the representation without actually showing it. With like J.K. Rowling, the stereotypes and the barrier gays, it's all kind of in that realm. Yeah. But what makes good representation? Oh, so much. So much. It's so easy. It really, it's not that hard. I mean, you know, just, I, I think like you said, making um, characters that it isn't all about them being queer, you know, it's, um, it, it's just part of their personality and it, um, like, just like their hair color. Um, and then, but at the same time, you do need to have stories about characters who are inherently queer because mm-hmm. that is a struggle that a lot of uh, cis people don't always understand. And that can open up, um, from what I'm understanding, from people who don't understand. That made sense. Um, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> and then it can also really provide a good fl- place for queer people to see themselves in representation, which you know it, it's like a really good place so that you can connect with yeah these characters so examples of that too which i could go on forever come hold your horses i'm a talk i love this book so much we'll get to that <laughs> the magnus j series is a cesspool of diversity and representation we have disabled main characters we have a Muslim main character, and we have a gender fluid main character, a pansexual main character. It's so good, you guys. <laughs> it's so good for representation, and everyone should read it. Also, the way this author did it too was he wrote this series, and it did. It was it was pretty like the stereotypical fantasy series. It was all pretty straight, and then slowly as he that series grew more and more popular, he started adding in more representation so like the publishing company couldn't say no at that point because it was so popular where the publishing company was like we have to do this people are like begging for these books and the author was like okay well here's a gender fluid main character here's a healthy gay relationship you gotta publish it you have no choice yeah (laughs) and that's that's like great because that also like um it's like including queer people who are discovering their identity Mm mm-hmm it's um. honestly how I, it like followed my kind of path too because I started yeah. reading it when I was like 10 <laughs> and now and now I'm like reading this super diverse book as I'm insanely queer. <laughs> um, <laughs> Which is how I would describe myself. <laughs> There's also uh, for short stories, I've been really into short stories recently. Um, not the only one. The That's that short stories. That's a little more YA, so be be careful. Yeah, YA is too. good. Not not young. Mm, uh, I like get it now. Yeah, um, <laughs> but there's also this book. Read this recently. It is queer characters throughout history. I am in love. There is a trans Robin Hood. I love it so much. Trans and gay. It's a healthy relationship. The main character for health is trans, is a trans guy, and he's in a healthy relationship with a deaf gay guy, and they're, it's so good, and it just, it, it also like exposes the idea that queer isn't like a recent concept, and it's not just you know, teenagers these days wanting to be special <laughs> snowflakes. Oh, I know? hate that term. Oh, so. Okay. Uh, another thing that makes good rep is, like, especially in, like, movies and TV shows, is casting. Like, casting Ooh. trans characters, actors to play trans characters. Yeah. Casting, like, <clears throat> there's, um, oh, casting is so important. <laughs> what, what is it? Uh, Three Generations, I believe. It's about a uh, trans guy and his journey becoming trans and how his family accepts that. And it's really kind of a cool film with these, like, uh, you know, cool family relationships, you know, and especially because the main character has these uh, gay grandparents and how, like, that older generation of gay people isn't as accepting of the newer generation of uh, genderqueer people. Um, So it's a good series, except 
Or, I mean, it's a good movie, except it's not a trans character playing. A trans actor playing a trans character. That's what I meant. Yeah. And correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't there like a... Isn't there like a trans superhero in a new... F- this is in the news, where it's like, I think Supergirl had a trans superhero being played by a trans woman now. I might be wrong. <laughs> I, I'm not sure. Um, younger audiences. That's that, That's where it gets hard, but... um. But it's casting is super important it, with all kinds of di- like diversity. Like you can't, you can't. It's also like you can't cast a white, a whole white person to play a person of color. Exactly. Which is not as common now. Hope good. Which is better. <laughs> um. But you don't then have, okay. I mean, like for you, there's there's the Lumberjanes, which is a really sweet series about, and it, it's more um of a low key. Like low key, the characters. It's not about them being gay, but they are all queer in some way. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's their adventures at a summer camp. Um, There's Mm -hmm. Steven Universe, which is so good. It's, yeah. Your eyes will light up when you talk about these things. (laughs) Um, You know, there's Adventure Time, which has Princess Bubblegum. That was like a huge deal. I I didn't even watch the show. And and I just like, like... Kiss at like, the end, which whoa. is so great. And it's like a wave of gay, like and I was like, what's going on? A sweet little romance that's happened over the years, and it's developed, and then it's acknowledged at the end, which is Finally. a thing. Finally acknowledgement. <laughs> yeah. Another thing, representation, is also like mental health from a representation. Like, you don't see that a lot. Good book for good book and movie for that. I haven't read the book, but I saw the movie. Perks of Being a Wallflower, you have queer and mental health, where it's like one of the main characters is queer, and he's talking about, like, the struggles of dating someone who's closeted, and then there's also Ooh. the other main, the, like the main main character, is dealing with mental health, and he was put in a hospital, a, like a psych ward, and it's a really, it's really really good for like mental health and queer. It's, I watched it like a few nights ago, and I'm still just like <laughs> overwhelmed by how like amazing it was, and the actors they were so Edward Miller's in it, and he was playing a gay guy, and I was like yes, <laughs> what a little problematic. I- yeah, I've read something recently. Um, okay, let's not go. Okay, yeah, let me live. It's fine. I appreciate him. Yeah, for being a queer person. But he's person. so attractive. <laughs> sure. Um, <laughs> and then Freak Boy. I read that recently. It's um like a book that's like set up in poem format, and it's about um a trans NB woman and her struggle like figuring out who she is, and especially like with toxic masculinity in this. Mm-hmm. like modern culture and how that affects um queer people who are amab you know assigned male at birth and their coming out process and mm-hmm. and we talk a little bit about Simon, Simon and homo sapien agenda a lot of people don't know that there are actually two other books in that series there are yes nobody knows about them and it bothers me but there's leo on the offbeat which follows his best friend oh, who is that. A uh, plus size girl, also discovering her bisexuality. <gasps> really? And then there was a spin off book about a um, Abby, who is a character named Simon mm-hmm. Homosapien and Gender, her cousin, who is also discovering kind of, who is raised by two mo- moms whose sister is also queer. It's so gay. The main character isn't gay either, which is also kind of refreshing because it's still super gay, but she's also like, yeah. it's a real, so, yeah, there are two spin offs that no one knows about. I gotta read those. Read them. <laughs> I'm talking directly to you. Read them. You know who you are. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so, arguments against queer representation. Sadly, there are a few. <laughs> M- many, most of all of them wrong. <laughs> One of them is most people that are watching these shows aren't queer. Uh, do, so fact check. Do you agree. really know that? Do you really know that the person sitting next to you isn't queer? I mean, I know that they are queer. Shocker, everyone! I'm queer! (laughs) Sorry. Um, But yeah, statistics disagree with the fact that most people aren't queer. There are so many broad. It, there categories. are so many identities in yeah. the, like the queer spectrum and to be cis hat there are only two identities that you have to be with. So it's kind of like just saying, <laughs> just saying, math. Also, another one that people ask is why do you need to see yourself in media? And that question's always being asked by the people who are overrepresented, overrepresented, 
who always see themselves in media. Yes. So like straight white guys where there are so many versions and so many identities and like so many people that you could connect with where it's like, we need to see yourself in media too so we can remain sane. <laughs> Also, and um, that you hear a lot, is forcing the gay agenda on children. You force the straight agenda on children. True. Sorry. Um, <laughs> that was a bit aggressive. A bit aggressive. Um, I, I mean, I just, I think it would be kind of cool if, like, everyone had to come out, you know? Like, not only the queer kids. Like, you reach a, 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 a you know, you'll get to a point in your life where you're just kind of expected to, like, identify yourself to your parents like that'd be kind of cool whether you're Mom, straight dad I'm straight oh my god <laughs> whoa but like I, I don't know I think that'd be like I think that'd be really really cool I feel I would love that but I don't think it's ever gonna be a possibility I know sadly but we can try it's you know it's that whole thing where heteronormativity and cisnormativity like the idea that everyone or the idea that you assume someone is cisgender or heterosexual or both and, and less proven otherwise. But rep can fix that. Exactly. Like, rep can fix that. That's why we need it. We need it. We need it. We do. <laughs> I'm just going to keep repeating we need it to each other. Okay. <laughs> so to end this, what do you want, what have you taken away and what do you want people to take away? Just like one sentence, what do you want them to take Ooh, away from sentence. this? One sentence. One sentence. I'm first. limiting you. You go first. Rep matters. <laughs> um, try to expose yourself to representation that you may not identify under. All right. This has been, been All Things LGBTQ Plus Youth, Youth Edition. Edition, and we will see you soon. <laughs>